Hello, this is Fran Smitherman from Creative Life Scrapbooking here to show you a technique that I used on my January 22nd, 2024 Border Maker Monday, in which I made a Valentine's layout with a, a faux gift bag, you know, like the little bags that children bring to school to collect Valentine's in. And of course, this is a 2D bag. Um, you know, it does have some depth to it, but when you put it in a scrapbook, it's going to be two dimensional because it's going to get pushed down. But you can use the same technique that I used here for this layout to make an actual gift bag. And I'm going to show you how to do that. It is a great thing to have on hand um, when you find that you haven't been to the drugstore and bought little gift bags for people. And as scrapbookers, we tend to have an arsenal of designer paper anyway. So why not use it for something fun other than scrapbooks? So let's go ahead and get started making this gift bag. I'm going to put my layout to the side if you want the, the dimensions and the uh, instructions on how to make this layout. It's available on the Creative Life Scrapbooking website, as are all of our um, handouts, just for a small fee. So if you want that, it's available. I am using this year's Valentine's Collection Suite on You to make the gift bag, and it's only going to be available for a limited time, I'm sure. So um, if you don't have it, of course, you can use any designer paper that you have. And I actually use cardstock on my original layout, a lighter weight cardstock. So um, lots of different options. But let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to do here. I've got this designer paper. You need to think about directions if it does have patterns on it because you're going to want your bag to stand up, obviously. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to cut a six inch by 12 inch piece of paper. I've got my straight blade in. We're going to switch back and forth between the straight and the scoring blade on this layout. So just you know, be aware of that. Let's just go ahead and make a simple six inch by 12 inch cut. So, then we can put this to the side maybe for another bag. But for now, we're just gonna work on making one. So let's go ahead and switch out the straight blade for the scoring blade. And I will say I have noticed that if you push too hard using the scoring blade, or even if you come from the bottom to the top as opposed to the top to the bottom, it slices real easily, and that's not what you want. We're just trying to make something that we can create folds. We don't want anything to tear. Um, so just be aware of that. Cut from the top and don't push down too hard. So we are going to make uh, scoring marks at the one and a half inch, the five and a half inch, the seven inch, and the 10 and a half inch mark. So let's just do that. Remembering always go from the top lightly. Works just fine when you do it that way. That's one and a half. Sometimes I get a little carried away and I forget and I immediately regret it. So I'm trying to be very conscious to automatically just slide it back up to the top so it's already there lightly. Then 10 and a half inch. The bottom of the bag, we're going to make a cut that is at the one and a half inch mark. And it's not a cut, excuse me, we're just scoring it. So let's turn it like so. One and a half. Top to bottom. And do it. Now, we are going to want to, you know, cut little tabs here so that we can fold the bottom of the bag. So let's switch out our scoring blade straight way. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to cut to the scoring scored corners. Okay, so this is um, one and a half inches, you know, five, uh, seven, five and a half, one and a half. We only want to go to this part right here. So this little white line is going to come in handy to help us line up with where we're cutting. So it just, it takes a little practice, but um, we'll see. We'll start over here, put it at the 10 and a half inch mark because that's going to put us where we need to go to cut. I am I'm watching very carefully on my straight blade and I am just going to cut to this mark right here, just like that. Slide it over to the seven inch. Okay. Yep. Stop, stop. The five and a half. Last but not least, the one and a half. Okay. 
just to there. Okay, and those are all the cuts we're going to need to make. So I'm going to put my scoring blade back in its storage place over here. And I'm gonna get out um, you know, you can use regular adhesive. I'm using this Max crafting tape with a love. Um, but we're just gonna just lightly fold where everything was scored like that. Okay. And it really doesn't matter whether you put the adhesive here or here, you know, your preference. So I'm just gonna, gonna put it here. I'm just gonna fold the bag in on itself and line the edges up like that. Okay. And this is where our um, our cut tabs are coming in handy. Fold them down. And same thing if you want to just you know decide which which one of the pieces you want to put the adhesive on to create the bottom. You do that. It's gonna want to is here. And you know what? If you want, I think it gives it a little more security if you put some on the shorter tabs as well. Here we go. And I you know, it might have I have the scissors on hand because it seems like no matter what I do, I like to have a little something hanging off. Clean that up a little bit, and here we go. If you need to feel like you want to put a little bit more adhesive anywhere, you can, but put in some tissue paper, and you've got yourself a little treat bag. So I hope that helps, and thank you so much for supporting Creative Life Scrapbooking. We'd love to see what you do with this.